City Hall has shut down indefinitely Uhuru Park in Nairobi, the venue where NASA intends to use next Tuesday to swear in its leader, Raila Odinga, as the people's president. Now, in a paid-up notice in the dailies today, Acting County Secretary Lebo Olemorin Tat says the park is scheduled to undergo phased improvement works in order to enhance recreational usefulness to its visitors. Consequently, the facility has been closed down to the public for any gatherings and meetings with effect from yesterday's date. Prior to the closure, two other groups besides NASA had claimed to have booked the venue for separate gatherings at the park on the same date, raising doubts over NASA's plans. To other news, MPs will from Friday this week receive reimbursements of mileage claims running into millions of shillings after the High Court halted the implementation of pay cuts recommended by the Salaries Commission. And following revelations that many MPs have been making false claims, Parliament leadership has spelled out measures to stop the theft. Jackie Maribe has the details. By the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to bring down excessive spending through benefits for parliamentarians was dealt a blow in December after High Court Judge George Odunga suspended the implementation of a new pay structure. This after the Parliamentary Service Commission went to court. The PSC deeming the revised structure unfair. As such, lawmakers will, beginning this Friday, enjoy reimbursements on their car mileage claims. A memo by the National Assembly Clerk Michael Selai says in compliance with the court order, the PSC will revert to remuneration packages for its MPs under SRC's 2013 structure. The memo reads in part, quote, the allowance is payable in two components. Fixed car maintenance allowance at 326,525 shillings per month and mileage allowance claimable for extra kilometers beyond 375 kilometers. For eligibility, legislators are required to provide a copy of the logbook of the vehicle they will use to travel to the county or constituency and a letter from the relevant ministry confirming distances from parliament buildings to their homes using the most direct route. But while the case is set to be mentioned next week, Monday on the 29th of January, there are more benefits on the table that will see taxpayers dig deeper to accommodate their representatives' perks. Sources indicating SRC commissioners had already yielded to pressure and okayed a 120,000 shilling monthly car allowance for MPs for 60 months before their term expired. That would still translate to 5 million at the end of their five-year term. In addition to the car maintenance allowance of 356,000, they will enjoy benefits in mortgages, medical allowances and sitting allowances for attending house and committee sessions. Well, that's the biggest talking point this morning and it's been covered in the dailies as well. On the front page of the Standard, not again, MPs get their way on pay. 278 million shillings mileage claim Kenya's war on wage bill lost for now after legislators win back controversial travel allowances previously scrapped by Salaries Commission. The story continues on page 8. Just the highlights. Each of the 416 MPs will pocket at least 668,000 shillings more in allowances at the end of this month. That's how the standard has covered it. On the Daily Nation, it's, it's, it's actually highlighted on the top strip of the uh, paper. MPs to pocket millions in weekly mileage claims. The story is also on the back page. High Court suspended a Gazette notice in a case filed by PSC on pay. SRC had proposed a fixed transport allowance, which the lawmakers protested. Yes, the MPs finally have their way before we engage one of the members of Parliament who is with us here. Let's check out uh, the reaction from members of the public on Twitter. Willis? Right on. So we want to take out, uh, check out what people are saying on Twitter. Just uh, scroll up a little bit so we see. So this is what they're reacting to, Fred. As you can see, this is what was covered in our news. So they're going to be having a fixed car maintenance allowance of about 326,525 per month. And the allowance is claimable for extra kilometers beyond 375 kilometers. Yeah, I think we talk in Nairobi. <laughs> All right, so, and of course the title there was House of Greed. This is how they reacted to that particular tweet by Citizen Television. Now, uh, 1985K, I believe 1985 is probably the day she, she or he was born. And who is the judge in this case? It seems to come from Mars. Be warned and stop playing games with Kenyans. Kate Coy says, this is so selfish and totally unacceptable and the way the economy is performing poorly. And then Nathan Bos Andersko Bosiro says, God is watching them. Justice will only be served at heaven. 
where they will be seen equal but I'd rather justice is also served on us ndio sisi wote tuishi vizuri tusingoje binguni he continues to say indeed it's a house of greed and tags are uh, premiers mohia and then it's high time as citizens we should wake up and redeem ourselves from these greedy lots they don't give a damn about nothing and then they go on to quote Donald Trump uh, with the same as what he called uh, African countries and uh, continues to ask who is fooling who courts ruled that MPs to which basis did they pass which basis was this uh, passed by the PSC and he goes on to tag other people as well Jaff Munene uh, says that they should, people should have considered public interest in the matter instead of choosing to please some few greedy officials and uh, <laughs> this guy's name is OGG Banji or Meow he says the re this is the reason I don't vote I'd feel so foolish I'd never forgive myself for giving um, and again his words not mine an idiot a five year job pay him or half from my tax upon unilaterally deciding on his or own salary and packs and then forcing me to pay nipende nisipende and I'm going to say ngombe karibu aseme food lakini ni ngombe then baba josephine says kenya is the only country in the world where if you want to loot or to break any law you just need to proceed to the judiciary <laughs> negotiate and you buy your own immunity again those are their comments not those of citizen television and then this is one that i think hit home fred uh, which is the last one we're going to look at Lynette mondo 3 says jeez nasina hata job ya 20k um, I guess in relation to they're feeling the pain Fred in terms of uh, what it is uh, that is going on that these parks are uh, being increased yet the economy is poor and as you can see some saying that they don't even have jobs that pay them 20k over to you Fred oh thank you Willis Willis something some of the views on social media with regard to the big headline this morning and that's has to do with the uh, mileage claims by members of parliament. We do have a member of parliament this morning, David Olesan Cock, nominated MP Jubilee Party. Good morning, Karibusana. There's quite a lot to discuss about parliament, especially re with regard to what happened yesterday at the committees. But let's start with this one. Uh, <laughs> of course, this is a big headline. Uh, you can see there's not much sympathy or not much. Uh, goodwill, public goodwill coming your way this time round. Uh, it, this has happened before even you became a member of parliament, that parliament has over and over managed to uh, determine how much they each should earn, how much each member should uh, be paid. Uh, the Salaries and Remuneration Commission uh, came into place to actually change that. Now we can see Parliament still able to go around that and ensure they still get their way when it comes to their pay. Do you think this is how it should be? Why are you saying it is Parliament which got its way, yet it is the courts that rule? And uh, to speak the truth, uh, we are very comfortable with what SRC gave us. You are because, comfortable? Uh, because we are prepared. Uh, when uh, we came to Parliament, we already knew what we will be paid. Mm -hmm. And uh, those who seek elective posts or those who seek uh, nominative, nominative posts, already knew what they will be paid so uh, literally we were prepared but i think uh, i don't even remember who took the case to court well uh, yet you 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 know the kind of uh, wage bill that the country uh, uh, currently uh, is facing Exhibitant. yes yes uh, do you agree uh, with this uh, decision by the Parliamentary Service Commission to revert back to the old allowances, in fact, backdate some of the allowances that you've not been paid since you got elected? It, it is a court case. It's a court ruling. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, it will not be in order to discuss the court ruling. And, uh, it, it is. Uh, it has already been ruled upon, mm -hmm. so uh, it, it is not uh, <laughs> a sub judice, uh, because it's already happening. Mm -hmm. This is a fact. It's already been written here. We're looking at the headlines. And less than a month after winning big on disputed car grants, MPs are expected to start receiving millions of shillings in weekly mileage claims. Now, this comes after the Parliamentary Service Commission, which is your employer, uh, reverted to the Salaries and Remuneration Commission circular of November 15, 2013. Now, uh, you got the car grants. This means each of you now, uh, the 416 members, will now get 5 million shillings as car grant. Uh, it is now included in the PSC budget, the mileage allowances. And now, 
it appears at the end of this month, HMP will go home with at least 1.3 million shillings. According to the SRC, uh, it should have been about 710,000 shillings. Don't you think that that's almost double the amount that MPs should be earning? Um, I've not seen the ruling, but uh, I will look forward to see that ruling. Oh, yet, uh, I'm, I'm uh, telling you as it's being reported here. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at those yeah, figures. Yeah, but that, those are the, what have been reported. I don't know if it is the uh, truth or... Uh, it's in both papers. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> that means it's fact. Oh, okay. I'll yeah. go and look into it. But, uh, but, but just looking at those figures, do you think it's right? By the way, according to the Kenyan wedge bill, I don't really uh, support. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the moment, let me see the ruling and then uh, uh, maybe later on we'll discuss the same issue. Yes, you are a member of parliament, so you do not represent uh, uh, a particular geographical constitu uh, constituency. You yes. have a constituency, but not geographical. Yeah. Yet uh, your colleagues who represent geographical uh, constituencies have been claiming mileage. Uh, some have been uh, even duping the Parliamentary Service Commission. Uh, what do you say to that? No, if there is somebody who have duped the Parliamentary Service Commission, and uh, of course through Google Map and everything, we know where these members of Parliament come from. They are criminals. Mm -hmm. Let them be taken to court and let them face the law. Because uh, if you do, uh, or uh, that, that, that one, that is that one means you have broken the law, mm -hmm. and uh, there is a punishment for it. Okay. So for me, I don't support that one. That one is too bad. David Olesan Cook, we are still not done with you. Let's take a look at more news from Parliament. The Jubilee Party stamped its authority as 45 MPs were kicked out of four parliamentary committees yesterday. The MPs were dethroned following an order by President Kenyatta after they defied the party's position on regional balance. The legislators, however, accused their colleagues of allowing the executive to interfere with Parliament's independence. This story by Sabogera. It was a showdown as the embattled Jubilee leaders fought to survive an onslaught from within. The four dethroned from their respective departmental committees for defying a party position on regional balance, a verdict cascading from state house. Let us not be part of people who want to preside over a collapse of this institution so that we become an annex of the executive. The die had been cast, but Keter went down in a ferocious battle. We are not going to be people waiting to receive instructions from elsewhere. This is parliament, we are elected leaders, and we must be allowed to, de to exercise our democratic rights. We are people we are living outside there. What are we going to tell them? That you are, you are given money to come here and change our minds? I understand part of the reason is that some members here were advised to say, wait, some, some members here were saying, you are out of order, you are a heckler. You are a non heckler. Order, 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 order. You are a non heckler. Order, non heckler, you are a non heckler. Order, my friend. Order, order, order. Commander Manu, you have always been on the road. The Constitution is supreme than any other law. You can't follow standing order. You are a witness. The same people advising you are the same people who deleted my name in the list of the Larson Committee, where I was a member. I was duly elected on 23rd of December. You cannot come and sit here and, ima and start imagining that you can give a professional advice. It is wrong. You are part of the problem that you are trying to solve here. The standoff occasioning a five-minute break that saw Jubilee's top brass in Parliament to monitor developments from within the committee room. Despite the pleadings, Keter lost 10 votes to nil. While Moiben MP Silas Teren was ousted as the Agriculture Committee Chair with 12 votes against one, Embakasi North MP James Gakuya stepped down from Parliamentary Broadcast and Library Committee Chairperson. The people were supporting the vote of no confidence. Despite braving the storm, Maraquit East MP Kangogo Bowen lost the Vice Chairmanship Environment and Natural Resources with 10 votes to one. I want to affirm my support to this committee that I will be participating and uh, contributing and uh, oversighting as a member of parliament of Maragwet East and also a member of this committee. We will work together with whoever we, you will vote as a, as a new vice chair. After the high drama in a flurry of media conferences, it was accusation and counter accusations with the Jubilee leadership describing the victory as deserved to restore party discipline. We will not allow any of our members to disfranchise our rank and file members in Jubilee. In government, we will have 
the principle of equity. In parliamentary leadership, we have the principle of equity. Did you look at the membership in the entire committee? It represents different areas. So when you talk about uh, balancing from regions or, or ethnic uh, balancing, it does not really make sense, I would say. The National Assembly now awaits the liaison committee to sit and issue debts when the four committees will conduct fresh elections. Our story has also been uh, covered by the Daily this morning on page 5 of the Standard. Jubilee kicks out four rebel MPs from House team. Ruling party dislodges lawmakers from uh, heading committees as residents blame the executive. In the last Thursday, President Kenyatta and his deputy hosted MPs and asked them to reject their leaders. On the, uh, page 6 of the Daily Nation, same story, aggrieved politicians to remain um, as members of their respective National Assembly groups. You've seen a very fiery... Uh, member of the Labour and Social Committee, David Olesan Cook, uh, in a very heated exchange there with uh, Alfred Keter, member of parliament from Nandi constituency. Uh, Bernasan Cook is here with us this morning. Uh, incidentally, you're the one who moved that motion of no confidence against your chairman. Yes. Uh, what exactly did you say the chairman did? Uh, because a vote of no confidence uh, uh, surely comes when you have committed uh, an offence. What did uh, Alfred Keter do uh, apart from uh, disobeying the Jubilee Party? It is not the issue of uh, disobeying our resolution, which was uh, made uh, when we met our party leader, and we all contributed and made a resolution that Jubilee is a party that should represent all Kenyans and all regions should be represented. Uh, some of us are more qualified uh, to be chairman. Personally, I've been the chairman of SONU. In, during my university days, I've been a chairman of National Council for Personal Disability. I've been a chair of uh, various institutions, state corporation. So I was more qualified. But when we sat down and said, this is a party for all Kenyans. We should actually have a representation of all Kenyans. And then somebody went behind our resolution and decided to butter trade uh, our resolution with uh, guys from NASA and that is why uh, they went there and uh, colluded with NASA that uh, we should sell Joyce uh, Courier, Honorable Joyce Courier from Bomet who was supposed to be the vice chair trade it with uh, somebody from uh, NASA so that Keter can uh, get the uh, chairmanship and again uh, when I went and sat down and said we made a mistake as a labor committee because we have elected somebody who is not qualified at all to yes, be a chairman. Yes, One, you were there when that election... Uh, but I didn't that, vote that, for that him. Election, I didn't vote for him. Quite I, a number of your colleagues voted for him. Yes, time, but I... Uh, by, quite a number from the Jubilee Party. I protested because it was wrong to butter trade. Mm -hmm. You know, when you butter trade, it's not the issue of qualification, it's not the issue of leadership, it's not regional balance, which is captured in our constitution. That apart from qualification, we also have to have did you regional balance. Did you register that protest? I registered that protest during that election, and I went ahead and gave uh, now and went ahead and uh, moved a motion to impeach the chairman because I realized the chairman was not at all and is not at all qualified. One, mm -hmm. Keter, for your good information, is the same guy who went to a highway bridge and informed police officers that he make laws and break laws. But when you say that uh, he's not qualified, uh, to my understanding, any member of that committee is qualified to become chairman. When you say that Alfred Keter, your colleague from Nandi, is not qualified, what do you mean? If we do an election, there must be somebody who is more qualified than another one. So to me, Keter is an activist. He is not, uh, sup he's not uh, supposed to be a leader. He's what? not supposed to be a chair. Because, if, you know, he's a professional heckler. But and that is why... About, but when you talk about qualifications, what kind of qualifications are we looking at for the chair of the Labour and Social uh, Welfare Committee of Parliament? What kind of qualifications are these? One, you must not be an activist. You must be a leader. Two, we must have regional balance. Three, you must also be supported by your political party. But when you talk about regional balancing and you say we must have, that's a decision by the party. Uh, is it really a requirement in the standing orders that regional balancing has to be achieved? It is a requirement by our constitution that we must achieve regional balancing. And I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, it, it, it was a battle trade between NASA and uh, Keter. Mm -hmm. And the battle trade happened because NASA does not 
uh, really believe. And they, they don't have the world uh, regional balancing in their vocabulary. That is why most of their principles come from a radius of 25 kilometers from each other. So you're blaming, so when you're blaming this defiance by members of uh, your party on NASA, and uh, now NASA yeah. is behind the defiance? Mm -hmm. NASA definitely was behind the defiance, and they are still behind the defiance. That's why you, you had them. Now they have uh, uh, accommodated, they actually adapted Keter to be another professional heckler. We have no hecklers to be coming from that side of the political divide. Now, 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 now he is a heckler. Let me tell you, NASA does not believe on regional balance. Does not even understand. It is a word that does not exist in their vocabulary. Take for instance, Orengo come from Sierra. Uh, 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 Raila come from Sierra. Uh, uh, Wetangula come from, I think, Bungoma. They and then Mudavadi the come from Viga. These people come from 25 kilometers from each other. Mbadi, who is also the but minority on, leader, come from but on, on Homabi. On These guys on, come on from 25 kilometers from each other. So they don't know, they don't know when we talk of regional balancing. When for us, we say, Kenyan comes yes, from somewhere. no, when all, all of us, when for instance, for, for, for me to say, yes, I'm qualified to be the chair of the Labour Committee, but for the sake of regional balancing, we also need the coast people. We don't only need, need the Valley. The Jubilee is not a party of two communities. It's not a party of Rift Valley. Okay. No. Let me introduce a different voice to this conversation. David Oceani, analyst, joins us now. Good morning, David. Good, morning. Good to have you uh, with us here. You've just been listening to uh, the Honorable David Ole Sankok yeah. talking about the events that uh, took place yesterday in Parliament. Yes, yes. Do you agree with him that uh, there should be some level of qualification for anyone to chair uh, certain committees of Parliament? Because just by virtue of being elected a member of Parliament or nominated, then that should be the only qualification you need. If that is the qualification that is needed, if the standing orders or the rules of parliament do not specify anything that makes other people more qualified for those positions than the rest, then by no means can David Olesanko and Cronis lynch mm -hmm. Alfred Keter. I think um, it is not because of Alfred's qualification as people who understand and study the politics of the country. It's about reining in on a rebellious voice. Of course, David cannot start uh, telling us now that uh, you see this guy is not qualified. He went to a way bridge. If we got open, if we opened the closet for all these members of parliament, none of them, very few of them, okay. would be qualified in that regard. And when he says, I've heard him also making it very clear that, uh, you know, we want regional balancing then um, David must be coming from Pluto because the people who have been very, you know, disregardful, that's not an English word, I'm coining it on, on, on stu in studio, who have not had regard for regional balancing or appreciation of the other ethnic groups in this country has been uh, the jubilee. But in the last four and a half years of leadership. But don't you think that this is a really uh, a good attempt by the jubilee party to actually achieve that regional balance? Because you can see them actively uh, going out of their way, including fighting their own members just to achieve that. If balance. it had been a genuine concern, if that was the genuine reason <laughs> that fueled <laughs> this debate, mm -hmm. then I would be a very happy person. But I don't think it is. I think what is happening is that William Ruto has decided, like the light of you know the the, the war area of light to rein in on a few voices you know there has been this group Tiran you know uh, Keter mm -hmm. the governor for Wasingishu who've been very unruly a bit now once in a while as the leader you have to clamp them down and show who is boss okay. so it's not about my, whether my, it's my regional brother, balancing you know, I think it's just you know, raining I, in I, on I, the I, I you brought an analyst you mm. brought a prophet who yes. can prophesy on the mind of no, Ruto. He's not a prophet. Hey, no, 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 he's <laughs> analyzing. He is now, he's no longer analyzing. He's actually prophesizing mm -hmm. that I think Ruto, uh, William Ruto, is actually reigning on rebel. And I think this is a calculated move. You know, if you keep on thinking, <laughs> here we are speaking of facts. And the facts are very clear. That when we, uh, we sat down as a parliamentary group meeting, not necessarily because uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta is the president of Kenya, but, we but because he is the, the party leader. <laughs> <laughs> and we are in a parliamentary, uh, parliamentary system of government in which the political parties are represented in parliament, including the NASA 
political party yes. or coalition. It is represented because they have the minority but leader, the minority whip. 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 When you talk about the president mm -hmm. and uh, the party leader, yes. in the case of Jubilee, it's a very thin line uh, differentiating. When you hold your parliamentary group meetings at State House and not at any other venue, it means yes. something. When you call for a meeting at State House, uh, you go to see the president, not just a party leader. Uh, even in the days of Kanu, some uh, parliamentary group meetings were held at the Kasarani. My friend, let, me tell, you. To let, let, let me tell you, it is just by coincidence that our party leader is the president, whose address is on the house on the hill. That is the only coincidence. <laughs> but the issue is that he is our party leader. So you deny and that we will that discuss is. the issues of party as a parliamentary group meeting when he is a party leader, is not the president of Kenya. That is when we discuss. Okay. And this, this issue, we discuss and say it, Nandi, we, we, we will have uh, a chair from Nandi. Now, when again they go and collude with NASA and pick the, uh, the, the, the chair that we had given to coast people and take it back to Nandi so that two from Nandi are chair of mm -hmm. committees, this, we are going back to the days when we yes. had political parties like ODM, which we know which tribe it belonged to, when we had Honorable parties Sanko. like WEPA, which we know which tribe they belong to. Okay. What, do to the whole what do you say to this? What do you say to this? That parliamentary group meeting that took place at State House, yes. and this was agreed upon, yes. was attended by uh, many of your colleagues. Many, not yes. all. Yes. Your colleagues who attended that meeting still go to vote during that election, and they elected Alfred Keter. They did not elect Afrika Keter. The Jubilee Party has a majority in that committee. Exactly. Afrika Keter would not have been elected without Jubilee members voting for him. These are the same <laughs> Jubilee members who attended that parliamentary group meeting, meaning they were probably not in agreement with what uh, the directive given uh, in that parliamentary group. They would have raised those disagreements in the parliamentary group but they did meeting. Not. They did not. If they did not, and then they went ahead. And I told you, it was an issue of but a trading that... You know, not all of us will attend the parliamentary group meeting. Not all of us will uh, attend the committee meeting. So, majority of uh, uh, members of the Labour Committee, most of them from were not there. Yes. And then there was a butter trade that give me your vote as NASA. But it means that not all members agreed with that decision. Therefore, of uh, course, Qatar did not agree on that decision and means, did not raise any therefore, concern. Therefore, it means that the president is having a due influence. Not the president, the party no, leader. And don't, don't revive him as the president when we are discussing the parliamentary let me group say, issues. Let me okay. say this. Um, I think David Dolesan Cook here, who's a very robust, by the way, we are both former Sunu chairman. David Dolesan Cook only knows too well that he's speaking from both sides of the cheek. What they are doing to Alfred Keter is also butter trade. So he's accusing Alfred Keter of butter trading with NASA, which seems to be very sinful, which should not be, because now we are governing a nation and it matters that everyone ought to get something. It is in that same vein that they are trying to implore uh, Alfred Keter to now leave for somebody else who's not from Nandi. That's mm -hmm. also butter trade. Mm -hmm. They are both butter trades. Or one, one, I mean, the same thing done different. No, 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 no. If at all the members of parliament of Jubilee in those committees had been independently objective, they would not need to be instructed from State House mm -hmm. what to do and what not to do. So, like I said, the fact of the matter is, which he will not admit, but which is a thing, because I am a student of politics by practice and by study, that William Ruto has seen that if I do not clamp these boys, then they will run here. William Ruto is nurturing an ambition for 2022. It pays sometimes as the leader of the pack to firm up your position and say, guys, I will not let this go. You cannot just run around My brother. and get away with it. My and brother. that's what I think William has done. And he will make peace no, with them because he needs them for Thank 2022. You. Yeah, we were Sunu chairman together and uh, you, you understand <laughs> the fact. And actually, if you are really practicing law, and uh, the constitution is very clear, that will have qualification when we are appointing uh, when we are selecting maybe in appointive posts or in, in uh, employment, we have to have qualification as well as try to do regional balancing and gender balancing. Isn't it? Yes. So, Alfred Keter may be qualified. Although, for me, he's not you qualified. Not. He's not qualified. But he may be qualified. But we have to have 
regional balance. That is our okay. constitution. I so for us, we did not do any better trade. What finally, we did yes. was regional balancing. Finally, on this matter, uh, since uh, quite a number of your colleagues in Jubilee did not necessarily agree with that decision by the Jubilee Parliamentary Group, hence they voted for Alfred Catel initially, don't you think that probably it's in the nature of how you aware the venue you hold your parliamentary group meeting, that probably, if at all that meeting was held at a different venue, then they would have actually registered their uh, uh, displeasure. displeasure at that kind of directive. That, but, uh, but since it was held at State House, none of them could dare speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm saying you are becoming a prophet. The issue is that a few guys <laughs> did not agree with our collective uh, resolution as a parliamentary group meeting. But did not raise and the let me tell you, even today when we are here, have you agreed on what I'm telling you? I'm raising, raising, I'm raising my opinion. Yeah, we are, you, you are also having your own opinion. Yes. So it is not necessarily every day when we agree and make resolution that 100% have agreed on that resolution. Did they it is not a matter. Did they, did they, their they did not register their uh, uh, displeasure because they had to go back and try to, to consult with their masters, whom we know. Some of them have been sponsored by Wanjigi for a long time. We know them. Some of them are moles of NASA. So they have to go and actually uh, consult with them so that they come and re register their uh, displeasure after they have consulted with them. They will not have uh, registered their displeasure before consulting their masters. Okay. Gentlemen, I don't <laughs> want to let you go. And my director will have to bear with me. I want us to look at another political story. Uh, uh, Johnson Sakaja, Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja has come under scathing criticism for bailing out Embakasi MP Babo Wino from police custody on Sunday. This story by Makori Ongechi, because I want uh, uh, the Honorable David Ole Sankok to comment about this now that you say that NASA is behind the defiance within Jubilee. What are you saying about Senator Johnson Sakaja with regard to his relationship with Babo Wino, the MP for Embakasi? This story by Makori Ongechi. That is why we are here with Moses Kuria because... Natundu South Legislator Moses Kuria and his Kikoyo constituency counterpart Kimani Chungwa claim Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja had no right to bail out Babu Wino, let alone associate himself with opposition figures. They were especially concerned that Sakaja had come to the aid of Anasa Daihad, who has been a harsh critic of President Kenyatta. I feel begrudged that somebody... Notwithstanding that I have stayed for a whole week in cell, went to get some small boy from from from, from, from police station there. Right? Instead of encouraging that boy, being a young boy who still has got a long way to go, to learn how to respect the rule of law. Helping bail the Embakasi East Member of Parliament, according to them, is betrayal for someone they now claim was only holding on to Jubilee Party to win the Nairobi senatorial seat. They condemned Sakaja saying he is openly siding with their opponents. We vote for you, then when you go there, you forget the same vote. Why did he buy on NASA from the first? Let us not introduce politics. You have not seen our party leaders with Moses Kuria here, or even when he was incarcerated before he was charged. You never saw any Jubilee political leader going to attempt or even to try and get him out of police custody. On Sunday, the MP who is no stranger to controversy was released from police custody after Sakaja made an undertaking of 104,000 Kenya shillings and a personal surety to produce him in court the next day. Owino was on Monday charged with assaulting a parking attendant in Nairobi's Westlands area. The leaders were speaking after accompanying Korea to the Milimani locals for a hearing of an incitement to violence case he is facing. Scathing criticism coming the way of the Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja uh, because he bailed out his colleague in parliament, but uh, Anasa MP. Curiously, when it comes to uh, our earlier headline, uh, not again MPs get their way on pay, they seem to agree, no party lines there. But when it comes to other things, political, uh, there is Nasa and Jubilee. Uh, David Olesan Koch, uh, you just said that NASA is behind the defiance within Jubilee. Now, <laughs> this kind of criticism coming 
uh, from members of Jubilee towards Senator Sakaja for bailing out a colleague from Nairobi. Uh, do you really understand where they're coming from? My friend, you know, uh, bird of a feather flock together. And no one is above the law. Moses Kuria is a very good friend of mine. Very good friend. And we have been in friendship for a long time even before we were in politics. But when he was jailed, I could not go and visit him. Because what message will I have sent to the citizen of Kenya? That we, as members of parliament, are above the law. We can break the law at will. While uh, Nazi Barasa, when she insulted that, uh, uh, that, that particular security guard. security guard, she was charged, she was not above the law, and she was the uh, deputy chief justice. What will happen, what is so peculiar about members of parliament? If they actually it's true, Babu Win, who was a former uh, Sony chairman, just like the two of us. And he's actually a great That's friend of, a of <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's a good friend of mine. Yes, I could not have gone to visit him or bail him out. Let him face the full wrath of the but law. any suspect has a right uh, to bail uh, because uh, Babo Wino still had his day in court. Uh, the, the, the fact that uh, it is a jubilee member who went not, to bail him out... Not the fact that he's a jubilee member. That, if Sakaja the problem, if, if uh, Sakaja went, if, if Sakaja went to bail... No, no, Moses Kuria is different from me. If uh, Sakaja went to bail Moses Kuria, I will have still condemned him. Mm -hmm. Because what message will we be saying? Uh, so you do not necessarily setting. disagree no with, I don't with disagree Sakaja whether I do bailing out an yes. what I disagree on is why bail somebody as a leader who have assaulted the security guard okay. even that security guard have the right mm -hmm. just like uh, that particular MP and we should have let him and his family also have a pinch of what the law is all about mm -hmm. maybe bail himself with his own money so that he, next time it will be a deter to him from uh, assaulting security guard. Babu Wina have been known to assault everybody even when he was in the... He's your colleague in parliament. He's my colleague and the other day they were fighting with Jaguar. So this guy should actually be... In fact, we should have gone there as members of parliament and demanded the judiciary to tame this guy. David, what do you say to that kind of reaction and the kind of criticism uh, uh, leveled against uh, the Nairobi senator? There are cardinal rules of goodness. Cardinal rules as guided by what we believe in. If I am a Christian, then I anchor it on while I was sick. You, you know, you gave me, you came to visit. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I lacked food, you fed me. That's the Bible. Cardinal rules of goodness. I think the intolerance exhibited by Moses Kuria is, it's unfortunate. You must be able to accommodate people from both sides. Accommodate them for who they are. Sakaji has decided time upon number to rise above party lines sometimes and be the Kenyan leader. Mm -hmm. And that must be applauded. He has said that, yes, I belong to Jubilee severally before. When Honorable Antonio Lodge was being attacked, it was Sakaja who came to his rescue when the Jubilee goons were attacking him. And he said, no, this is not how we operate. And there are times when he has decided that I will not take the hardline stance of the party because this is an issue about Kenyans, it's not about the opposition. Mm -hmm. And that must be the model of leadership that we, you know, endeavor to have in all of us. That when we see that our party lines have been this and yet that's not good for Kenyans, then we declare that, you know what, the party wants this, but we know deep inside us it's not right for the country. And so let's act okay. in the best interest of the nation at all times. Now, Sakaja, I doubt he did that just for the sake of it. Friendships transcend party leanings. And if they are friends with Babu, fair enough. But there there, there so, must be a risk when you are a member of Jubilee Party. When you are even a member, former chair and, and of TNA. And to be seen yeah. uh, to be working with someone who has openly no, no, criticized no, 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 your party no, leader. No, no, there there must be a political way. risk as well. There must be a political risk, that I agree. But sometimes you want to weigh. You want to put that in the, in the weighing uh, scale and ask yourself, What's better at this point? Mm -hmm. To leave this guy to languish there for no apparent reason because there seems to be no footage showing us who was uh, attacked, uh, who for, was for whatever uh, reason. Uh, we don't right? uh, and, and, and most the matter is already before court. No, we don't need to, no, 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 to discuss no, 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 the merits no, no. or demerits. By the way, by well, the, it's not the issue of party line. Mm -hmm. It's the issue of uh, my friend here being genuine. 
yeah. that all Kenyans are important. Mm -hmm. And exactly. the eyes of Jubilee, all Kenyans are equal. Mm -hmm. For us, even the security guard was equal with the member of parliament. So if the member of parliament truly assaulted the the, the security guard, truly then it is the, the court. Yes. It is and the, the court, court will determine to that. To determine. Exactly. And if the guy was supposed to be uh, in uh, Roman for some time, then why should you go and bail him? No, but the court also allows for procedures of acquiring, you know, bailing but out But as a people. leader, what message will you send there if your fellow leader is in jail, you come together and rescue him? Why are you now blaming us when do, do you we come together mm -hmm. and uh, you, are, you are claiming that we normally come together when it comes to our pay? Because for me, when we are discussing this issue, I'm not even aware about this, uh, this, 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 this <laughs> mileage you are, are you talking saying, about. Are you saying when no, you, I'll go and, uh, uh, you, you uh, will, you will uh, uh, oppose this? Several times I've actually opposed. Sankok is I've opposed, and even in this media, Wahiga Maora was here when I was opposing the the huge payment right. because already we knew what we will be paid, and we, we decided that, to. We put to it on that. record. Honorable yeah. David Sankok says he opposes uh, this uh, mileage claims by MPs, uh, especially the dubious ones. What about the ones uh, allowed by the uh, Parliamentary Service Commission? That were we expunged, but now have been reintroduced. In our, uh, uh, in our salaries, I oppose. You oppose. Yes. Thank you so much, Honorable David Sankok, nominated MP. But I want uh, you to dare, party. David Sankok. <laughs> David that if he truly opposes, <laughs> yes. then we want to see him writing a check of the surplus back to Treasury. Wow. That's no, leadership. The prophet, the prophet. If he <laughs> truly. <laughs> now, already, already I'll, I'll appreciate that. that. <laughs> Time for us to go on a break. David Ossiani will continue with you. We have some music discussion. Uh, of course, the world is mourning the death of Hugh Masekela. We'll be discussing that uh, in, a, in a short while. Thank you so much, Honorable David Sankok. Time now for a break. We'll be back with more stories.